So over the past few weeks, we've gotten all the confirmation we need that Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Defenders, and the Punisher are canon. And besides the Disney Plus timeline news, certain people heavily rumoured to be returning, interviews with Marvel producers, we now even have Vincent D'Onofrio coming out and saying that the Netflix stuff has been fully canonised after they overhauled Born Again. But there is still a ton of Marvel TV shows that are kind of stuck in this sort of maybe, maybe not limbo, and these include Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Runaways, Cloak & Dagger, Hellstrom, Inhumans, and to a lesser degree I guess Agent Carter, which I'll talk about why it's not really the same situation with Agent Carter in a few minutes. But now that Daredevil and all of the surrounding shows have been fully brought into the MCU, it's kind of fun to consider what the next show to be brought into this fold will be. And in some ways, Inhumans already kind of is in this fold now, since Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness already brought back Anson Mount as Black Bolt, which was kind of insane for Inhumans to have one of their characters end up in the movies before Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and most of the other shows. But this is interesting because while obviously this was meant to be a different universe's version of Black Bolt, it kind of does say that if the Inhumans are ever fully brought into the MCU or used in the future of the MCU, you will very likely see the cast from the Inhuman show being the ones to play them, which makes a lot of sense because the cast was one of the things about that show that was really good. I feel like before Inhumans is ever fully canonized though, it makes a lot more sense for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to be brought in first. So Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is the one MCU show that for years was directly tied to the events of the movies, featuring appearances from characters like Nick Fury, Maria Hill, Sif, Gideon Malik from Avengers 1, a lot of really cool tie-ins, but these tie-ins were clearly one way with the films opting not to address anything from the show and the films not making any attempt to utilise the characters from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. in any way at all. And since Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. had started, we did see Clark Gregg as Coulson make a few appearances in the MCU, but never in present day. Like Captain Marvel showed us a much younger Coulson, What If showed us a multiverse Coulson, but the present day version from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. just didn't seem to exist if you were someone who only watched the movies and never watched the show. And for about a year before Secret Invasion came out, we were seeing rumours every other day relating to the show. A fake leaked watch list for Thor Love and Thunder did the rounds at one point with Sif's appearances on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. listed. Some Disney Plus promos came out promoting Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. with the Marvel banner beside it in a way we hadn't seen them do before. Fitz and Simmons were getting rumoured to be appearing everywhere, a big one being Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, and the main rumour being that Daisy Johnson was going to appear in Secret Invasion as one of Fury's main allies. This Secret Invasion rumour kept changing though, and at first it was that she'd appear in Episode 2, then Episode 3, then Episode 5, but we also kept hearing that Daisy in Secret Invasion might be a soft reboot of the character that is still played by Chloe Bennett, but her backstory isn't really talked about so that they can do whatever they want with the character and that we should also be preparing for her not being an inhuman at all. Now obviously pretty much none of any of these turned out to be true at all. I'm still convinced the leakers were lying about Daisy ever being in the show and just thought it was sort of a reasonable place for her to appear if she was going to appear in the MCU, like they were crossing their fingers that they'd be right sort of thing. But the scrambling and changing about what episode she was going to be in every week made it a little clear to me that they had no idea what they were talking about. And despite all the bait and switch though, I think if any Marvel TV show is going to end up being brought into the main MCU next, it'll be Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. because it already has a built-in fanbase that is a little bigger than the other non-Defender shows. And it has a ton of really interesting characters that would fit in or slot in anywhere in the current MCU and work well. You really could spread them out too, like you need a new character to be, to be a member of S.W.O.R.D., you pick an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. character. You need a new character to work with a TVA, pick a member of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. The show does get a little wacky in the later seasons when it brings in time travel, and that's still an endless debate amongst the fandom on what this time travel stuff does to where the show sits in the MCU, but it makes a lot of sense for this to be the next one you bring in, because Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. ended in a way with their entire roster of characters still out there somewhere. You don't even really need to dig into their backstory, just the basics of what this character does, and then, oh, if you want to learn more about them, you have over 100 episodes to revisit and do that. Besides Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I'm not fully convinced we'll see many of the others. I still think Hellstrom is the most unlikely to make a comeback. Unfortunately, the popularity and fandom for the show is almost non-existent. I did watch the show when it came out, and I thought it was just fine. I haven't actually revisited it at all since it came out. It's nowhere near as bad as the early reviews make it sound, but the show got absolutely zero marketing. We knew it was cancelled before it even aired, because it came out right after the news about the Marvel TV division being stopped in favour of the Disney Plus shows. And the show was announced at the same time as the Gabriel Luna Ghost Rider show, and then the Ghost Rider show didn't make any progress at all by the time the division was winding down, so that was cancelled. But Hellstrom had already some filming done, so it was better to just let Hellstrom wrap up its filming and air what they have. But then it got no marketing because Marvel and Hulu were like, what's the point? So if you weren't actively looking for it, good luck knowing it even came out. I definitely wouldn't be opposed to them coming back, however. It would show a really cool deep cut for the fans, and I don't feel like they'd necessarily lose anything by adding them in. Inhumans might have been the most critically panned of these shows, but Inhumans definitely at least had more eyes on it. Like, there was a real marketing push behind that show, and the first two episodes even released in IMAX cinemas for a little bit, which is a bunch of things Hellstrom never had going for it. 
Besides this, we have Cloak and Dagger and Runaways, and these shows do have a dedicated fan base behind them, and these shows are also tied together since they had their own mini crossover in Runaways' third and final season. So I feel like if you bring one of these back, you kind of need to bring them both back. The characters are relatively small scale, but I'm also not entirely sure where they fit in the current MCU landscape because the Runaways is a fairly big lineup. Like there are so many characters in that lineup that it'd be hard to make them all fit in an MCU film where they'd be appearing alongside other characters. Cloak and Dagger are a little easier to transition over. Cloak and Dagger also had some really cool Easter eggs and references to Luke Cage, so that could bode well for them getting brought over. A good thing Runaways has is that a version of the character Nico will be appearing in the animated Your Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man later this year, so if there is a desire to see more of her character from fans, Marvel might take that as an idea to bring some of the Runaways back. So if you're a fan of the Runaways and you watch Your Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, when the character shows up, maybe be like, oh, I'd like to see more of this character because it might push Marvel to maybe do something more with the characters in live action and maybe bring some of the cast from Runaways back. One thing though that unfortunately doesn't bode well is Runaways being wiped from Hulu and Disney Plus worldwide last May. In another string of tax write-offs or whatever, the bullshit that Zaslov and WB started, it, it started to spread to Disney Plus and Runaways was a casualty of that. Cloak and Dagger is still on there, at least in Ireland, but Runaways doesn't even have an official physical re media release, which means it's kind of just gone unless you look somewhere else for it, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. So I think this could even potentially make Runaways the least likely to come back out of every show on this list, because why bring back a show or bring back characters from a show that is very, very hard to legally watch now? Removing it all was a brain dead move, but it really does put the show and characters in an awkward place that most of the rest of these shows on this list don't have to deal with. Like even Hellstrom is still on Disney Plus, so Runaways is kind of just gone. Circling back around to the final show, Agent Carter, and this is the one show I think is in a much more solid place than everything else on this list. Agent Carter was a direct sequel to the Agent Carter one shot that came out in 2013 for the home release of Armatry, which, side note for a sec, it's so annoying they stopped making these because they were great. Like, imagine the cool shorts and one-shots we could still be getting to coincide with the Disney Plus and physical releases of the current MCU movies. It will be great. But anyway, Agent Carter, the two-season show, is the only one of these shows that Kevin Feige was actually properly involved in, being an executive producer on it, which he wasn't for any other non-animated Marvel show until Disney Plus came around. Plus, this show being a prequel set right after Captain America 1 meant it never really came close to contradicting or being involved in what the MCU was currently doing at that time. As long as they kept Peggy and Howard alive, then they were, really were free to do anything they wanted without a movie being contradicted, which probably did help this show's odds and helped them get more people to be involved with them than, say, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that is taking place alongside the MCU films and is kind of doing whatever they want in a way that could contradict some movies. But the big reason this show is in a much better position than the others as well is because in Avengers Endgame, Edwin Jarvis, a character introduced in Agent Carter's first episode, appeared in the film in the main MCU. Like, yes, it was the past, but it was still supposed to be a timeline identical to the MCU. Plus, he was played by James Darcy, the same actor, so this was more than any of the Marvel shows received until Charlie Cox appeared in No Way Home in 2021, and Anson Mountain appeared in Doctor Strange 2 in 2022. But even this version of Black Bolt is a multiversal version, so yeah. But look, I'm of the opinion that all of these shows are canon until we see a version of a character show up that has a completely different backstory or background. Like, even if a character shows up and it's played by somebody new, we've had recastings in the main MCU films, so it, that's not really a big deal. But if it's undeniable they're not the TV version, then yeah, okay, fair enough. But Agent Carter is the one show on the list that I think is undeniably considered by everyone at Marvel, and has been considered by everyone at Marvel to be both connected to the TV stuff and the movie stuff. Like, whatever universe or timeline it is, Agent Carter's season show happened. But do you think I'm right in all of this? Like, do you think the way I've described these shows is accurate or do you think it's not accurate? And if you don't think it's accurate, then what do you think is likely or going to happen in the future of these shows with their standings with the MCU? I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider liking and subscribing. And I hope you have a fantastic weekend.